how's the team? Uh, the team seems to uh, be okay. Um, we don't have any players back from from injury uh, as yet, but um, you know they've actually trained quite well this week. It's been uh, a shorter week again because of the the short turnaround, so we're okay. So no Scott Neville tomorrow night. Take it still. Um, how are you? What are your thoughts on how Kai Jones settling in alongside Tom Andrews? Um, look, Kai's not a natural uh, central defender, and and he's um, he's done very well in in some games, and probably um, uh, not as well in others. Uh, but in saying that, he hasn't he hasn't performed poorly, and he's he's actually done quite well. But you know, there's certain things when we play, we want to play with a certain pace, um, and yeah. He's he's been he's been good, but it's difficult because he's not a natural central defender. What do you think his, his uh, natural spot is? Six. Yeah, he's probably more suited in the midfield, um, but he does very well at, at uh, fullback as well, and that's something that we're looking at. Um, so you know, we'll keep assessing, and, and but at this moment in time, he's uh, he's playing and playing as a central defender. I know you don't like to focus on what your team's capabilities are, but Central Coast are banging the goals in. At the yep. Moment. Have you got any thoughts on how you might counter that? And they've scored nine in the last three. Yeah, they've got some very dangerous players up front. Um, we know that. We've uh, we've seen it, um, and we've got to be uh, a lot better defensively. I think the one, although we didn't play well last week, the one uh, positive for me was our defending in and around the penalty area. Um, Okay, the, the corner kick is our first corner that we've conceded all year, which is disappointing the way we conceded it. But even the Adelaide game, we defended very well. Um, so uh, we've got to make sure we set up that we don't get caught on the counter uh, again, like I said, and defend well in and around the penalty area within, within our structures. Yeah. Ross, Tom was just saying that he's not under contract for next season. Would you like to keep him here? Absolutely. <coughs> I've made it very, very clear that Tom's a leader. He's he's a fantastic player. Tom in defence is a like a goal scorer. He saves you a goal a game, you know, with some of the some of the stuff that he does. So, you know, um, he's he's for me he's he's a key player for this for this team. You know, like I said, he's a leader. He's he's doing extremely well playing out from the back. Um, he organises. He he's an integral part of this group and. You know, I said it from day one that he's a player that I'd want to keep at the club. Absolutely. So in terms of the talks, where, where I don't know. At? That's something that you need to ask Zach. You're just getting on to um, back to the game tomorrow and, and attacking. Um, Carlo Amiento's come off the bench the last couple of times, building his way back to fitness. I know you're probably not going to give us the team sheet, but um, are we likely to see more of Carlo tomorrow? Or? Yeah, possibly. Um, that's his natural position. He was doing extremely well until he got injured just before that um, FA Cup uh, semi-final, I think it was. Um, and he had struggled uh, ever since with the injury. So more than likely, um, we'll see a lot more of him. Um, but in saying that, Jez Lofthouse has done, uh, he played a, a great game in Adelaide, but these are all short turnarounds. So we've got to be careful of what we do. Um, Alex Parsons is also pushing for, for a spot as well. So we're, we're not 100% sure yet how we're going to set up. Um, the issue we have is possibly our number 10 position because we've got both both of our number 10s are out, injured. The Flo Berenguer and... and um, Flo's still out, yeah. Yeah, Flo's still out. So, and uh, Henry Hoare, and they are two key players. You know, another key player for us is who has been outstanding is Nikola Milajuzinic. You know, I, I think he's very underrated as a footballer. Um, and he's been outstanding, and, and but that, that number ten position is is a difficult position for us to fill because Joey Coletti has been playing there, but we've missed him in in the centre of the midfield because he starts a lot of our attacks. Yeah, no, no, no. Our playing style won't change as far as pressing higher up the pitch, um, as far as being very offensive, um, and I can say it, in, in and out of possession. You know, so that's not gonna, going to change, but we need to make sure that players understand their roles and responsibilities. 
So this point has been pretty good. Uh, Adelaide was was uh, exceptional after their, that first, say, 20, 25 minutes. And for the rest of the game, I, I thought we were outstanding in, in that. And there's been a lot of games that we've been doing that extremely well. Um, on the weekend, um, you know, it was a little bit different. You know, we come up against a team that was sitting bottom, uh, and I think it was six games in a row that they had lost, and they were desperate for the for the the points. And in saying that, we we still had chances to to win that game as well. Um, so it won't change the way we play, no matter who plays in those areas. We can sit down and have a look at the game and try and make our own opinions. But as a coach, is there an area of um, the rules play to date which has gone a little bit unheralded? I don't know. Yeah, don't be bashful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So there's there's two stats here. The 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 two outfield players that have played the most amount of minutes uh, in the league, not for Brisbane or in the league, are Tom Aldridge and Jay O'Shea. And the other stat is that Jay O'Shea is leading the league in so many different stats. It's it's ridiculous. Um, so. I've said it time and time again, uh, working with some of these footballers is, is amazing because of what they do. And I have so much appreciation and I'm, I'm forever grateful that, I, that I'm able to work with some of these players. But we're not a one, one band man, or one man band, should I say. We need everyone to perform. And I said it the other week, we need everyone to perform at their best. Jay O'Shea is, is incredible, but if the other players uh, around aren't playing at their best, we will struggle to, look, to win games. So he's been outstanding, but everyone else, I, I will say most of the, most of the games, I, I think for me as a coach, and it wasn't even the Wellington game, but the game on the weekend is probably the worst game we've played in, in possession. Is, uh, what's Jay's deal? Uh, is he uh, next season, is he locked in? Again, I don't know. I know that, that uh, the club had been speaking to him, but that's something that you need to ask Zach Anderson. He's in charge of recruitment. I have no say in that. I, I tell them, you know, I've ex explained to them the players that uh, you know are, are really vital for this this football club. But apart from that, I have no idea. After two games on the road, obviously back at home, how big a role do you think the crowd will play tomorrow? Night? The, the 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 Brisbane Raw crowd always play a huge role because even when we had five thousand the other week when it was raining, it was still loud. Um, but the more supporters we get to the games, the better it is for us. You know, they do lift the players. I, the then, I don't think people realise how much they lift that playing group, and, and it's always good to have that support. And and you know, again, I always look at the playing group. It's not about you know how I feel about it. It's it's about the players, and I know the players lift, and I know the players want more supporters there. And and I think that we've played good enough football. Um, for, for more supporters to come out and watch and support the Brisbane Raw because that's, that's the football that they're used to. So let's hope that it's a big crowd. Uh, again, it's a, it's a Thursday night. I don't think there's much on in Brisbane on Thursday night. Didn't the Heat are playing the same night, apparently? The, 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 yeah, the who? Allowed, yeah. the, the what? BBL, the, yeah, exactly. What, what league's that? <laughs> it's hospitality night, isn't it? <laughs> Is it? <Yeah. laughs> apparently, ticket sales are going judge. well. Are they? Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. That's hey Ross, Thomas saying how the squad's really sort of resilient, having to train somewhere else again, and uh, you know I guess tomorrow night too, the, you know you know Suncorp with that concert there the other night, the surface may not be great, so uh, I guess what the players are taking this ride. Yeah, um, like I said, and he's 100 percent right. This group, and I've said it time and time again, they are very resilient, and and I have the utmost utmost respect for these players because they deserve better and it's no fault of their own or the it's not the club's fault it's not not Kaz's fault at all you know what's happened in the past um, and I don't usually talk about this but what's happened in the past that this club has actually really hurt the club and, and Kaz is doing an amazing job uh, with Zach trying to get this club back to where it should be um, but I like I said to the players there's no excuses and we go out and play our football and if we play to our best we win the game uh, if we don't, 
then we sort of seen what we've seen what what can happen if we don't play at our best. But no matter what, I'm in front of that group. If uh, if things don't go well, and I take full responsibility, and I did the other day, and I'll forever take full responsibility, providing the players are giving me a hundred percent. I did. He called me yesterday morning. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I asked how I was about the loss, and I said, I'm not upset about the loss, I'm upset about the performance. Um, but, you know, the number one person I look at is me, and and why that happened. And again, there was, there's a lot of things that, that there's an old saying goes, no one knows what goes on behind closed doors. And that saying is so very, very true, but no one will know. And, and the reason why they won't know is because there's no excuses here. And I, no matter what happens, we go out and play to our best of our ability, and, and that's it. Just on a positive note, I just wanted to tell you this. Um, I think there's a bit of a, a positive feeling about Brisbane. I've been here for 20 years, and I was here when Posty Cogley was here and everything else. There's a good feeling about the Brisbane role that there hasn't been about for you for quite a few years, so you must be happy with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I, I don't smile a lot. Uh, when I'm at work, um, and I, I am happy, I, I really am, and I'm happy, you know, working closely with uh, with Kaz and and um, and Zach. But like Kaz has done a, a, an amazing job because I see the the hours that they put in, and I see it because we're there too, and and I know that sometimes they're there a lot longer than what what we are at the office. Yes, we start here early, um, but it's it's hard work. It's hard work that we've put in and, and the football that we wanted to play. And I was brought in here by uh, Ante Kovacevic. Um, and from the very first day, I said, this is the football that we want to play. And we're going to play. And for the most of it, we have played that football. Um, so, and I'm very, uh, I'm very pleased about that. Um, but again, I'm never, I'm never content. That's the problem. <laughs> I always want more. Um, you know, what more from a playing group, what more for the players, what more, you know, with the facilities or, or whether it's the field. So happy, yes, content, never.